Okay, good morning, or good afternoon, everybody. Um, today I'll be talking to you about um, several archaeological projects uh, that were completed between 2012 and 2014 at the City of San Francisco. <clears throat> this is sort of an odd presentation uh, because I'm no longer with AMIC and AMIC as a company no longer exists, but it was a really great project and I'm glad I get to share it with you today. So the Presidio is located just south of the Golden Gate Bridge. The client for this project was the Presidio Trust. Um, and the Presidio itself is a National Historic Landmark and a National Register of Historic Places listed district that is eligible under A, C, and D. It is currently managed by the National Park Service. Um, there, were, there are four four projects that I'm, I'm going to mention today. Um, the first one uh, that AMIC became involved with was located at Baker's Beach Disturbed Area 1A. And um, this project consisted of a 1.5 acre area um, from which uh, soil needed to be removed that had been contaminated by um, asphaltic materials. Later, we became involved in similar work at BBDA 2, which is south of uh, 1A. And then two other projects uh, that we also worked on um, was to conduct monitoring during sampling to test lead levels um, within a, a historic skeet range. And finally, a um, project to remove soil that had been contaminated by lead-based paint. And overall, our, our job was to ensure compliance with Section 106 of uh, NHPA. The Presidio has a complex history, and I'm not going to really go into it very much. Um, it certainly has a prehistoric component. Most of that was obliterated by historic use, uh, but I'm, I'm really not going to touch on the prehistoric use at all. Um, for our purposes, I'm the, the Spanish occupation um, first began in the late 18th century. Um, Americans uh, took over in the 1840s. But Fort Point was the first extensive fortification that was constructed during the Civil War. Um, by the 1870s, however, preferred fortification techniques had changed and um, Fort Point was largely replaced by East and West Battery. Some of these um, um, some of these features from East and West Battery still exist today, but they were largely replaced by um, so-called Endicott era construction in the 1890s. And if you visit the Presidio today, these are the features that dominate the landscape. The area was also used during World War II primarily for training purposes. Um, and for our project, is that putting down? Okay. For our project, we encountered um, artifacts and features that were associated with three uh, three time periods, mostly the East and West Battery era, Endicott era, and then World War II. By far, the most ambitious um, project was at uh, Bigger Beach Disturbed Area 1A, and I'll spend most of my time discussing this one. This area is near Battery Marcus Miller, um, and it was broken up into pre-remedial and remedial phases. The main thing driving pre-remedial work was the necessity of constructing a bridge um, to span from, the par from a parking lot over a historic sunken road to the bluff beyond. There was just no way that heavy equipment would be able to access um, the necessary areas any other way. And here you can see the in green the proposed is the proposed bridge alignment. Now pre-remedial monitoring goals were basically threefold. Um, one, there was um, an interest in determining if Magazine 19, which you can see out, maybe you can see it, I don't know, it's pretty faint, um, 
if, if uh, that was actually present and its condition. Um, many of these underground features, um, their locations were hypothesized from um, archival research. Another goal was to um, look at this feature right here, designated feature 133. This was um, a suspected World War II trench or foxhole. And then um, the last goal was to look at the frontal construction of the Endicott era batteries. So to, to look for Magazine 19, which is underground and nobody really knew where it was, um, we proposed um, a, a combination of um, augering and drilling to um, try to determine what was below the, the surface. A total of three geotechnical and 22 exploratory borings were proposed near the, um, the western abutment of the bridge alignment. Um, the red dots, or the, the dots here represent the, um, the, the borings that were advanced. You can see we kind of used a grid pattern to try and systematically search for this magazine. The red dots are borings that were refused. And this provided some indication of uh, the fact that the magazine or, or a feature was, um, was below the surface there. Um, based on the location and depth of refusal and using 3D modeling in ArcGIS, um, we hypothesized that the location of the magazine was actually located um, northwest of where archival research had indicated it was located. And here you can see the 3D modeling. And it's um, just shifted slightly. In the end, um, it was the, the proposed bridge alignment was modified to completely avoid the magazine um, and, uh, and it was partly because of uh, the refusal that we were able to determine where that was. Another part of pre-remedial um, work at uh, Baker's Beach uh, 1A was excavation. And um, this was to address the, the, se the second and third goal to look at um, feature 133, the World War II feature, and the Endicott era frontal slope construction. Um, excavations within this area um, did not conclusively determine what the function of that was. Um, it could have been a foxhole or, or some other um, trench that was used during World War II. Uh, we did find several casters, though, so that indicated that it might have had some kind of retractable roof. The frontal slope construction was also kind of interesting. Um, excavations revealed that there were some sacked cobbles at this, it, located in this trench, um, but those same stacked cobbles were not located there, so it may have been some kind of um, necessary drainage feature that was added after the initial construction. So after all this pre-remedial work, remedial activities began, and these were extensive. Um, I think I only have one slide devoted to it, but um, you know, it involved building this gigantic bridge and um, a ton of vegetation removal and soil removal, as well as regrading. Um, but during, because of what we discovered during the uh, pre-remedial phase, it was determined that additional archaeological work was necessary during the remedial phase. So we did 10 additional trenches, um, also monitored uh, using, and we used metal detectors um, and provided archaeological monitor, monitoring throughout the, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole phase. There were a number of unexpected features that were recovered during uh, this, this uh, project. They represented two primary area, uh, periods of use. First, West Battery and second, Endicott era. Uh, West Battery was 1870s and um, we found uh, most notably feature 11, um, which is a, a, a remarkably intact gun emplacement um, that, that was from that 1870s era. There were also several magazines that were recovered. 
Um, the Endicott era resources were generally related more to maintenance. Uh, there were a number of erosion control uh, features as well as drainage features. All right. Baker Beach 2 is uh, the, the second project in which we were involved. And um, it's located south of um, Baker Beach 1A in an area near Battery Godfrey. Much like at, uh, at 1A, the tasks performed at this area included extensive vegetation removal, excavation, and regrading. And this was, again, to remove um, asphaltic roofing material that had contaminated the soil. This was a, a much smaller area. Um, and we didn't get as much out of the archaeology at this, this site. Um, it, was, it was pretty mixed. It was used as a dump. Um, and it was, uh, the context was not as good. But overall, we, were, uh, we recovered um, 112 artifacts, including bottles, ceramics, metal, um, um, and a whole group of headstone fragments. That's what these are. There were also four features, including um, undetermined uh, brick and mortar fragments, concrete pours, and a dump. The next project uh, was located at the Bluff Skeet Range, which is um, up in East Battery. And uh, was the, the Skeet Range and the, the project was located near um, 1870s era uh, fortification features. The skeet range itself was uh, located, was used primarily between 18, or 1929 um, and 1934, and the concern was that there was some contamination of the soil by, those, uh, by the skeet and other um, ammunition. So there were, there were a number of sample holes that were drilled, and uh, we provided archaeological monitoring during this. Um, there were a couple of artifacts found, mostly skeet, go figure, um, and uh, concentration of artifacts, but context, again, mixed. We didn't get a whole lot out of it. Um, if anybody knows how to date skeet, though, that would be, that would be great. There was little patterning uh, evident at this site. And the final, the final project I'm going to mention um, um, involved monitoring during excavation to remove soil contaminated by lead-based paint. There were seven buildings um, where this excavation occurred, and they're listed there. Um, it was all throughout the, the Presidio. Um, archaeologists monitored, monitored during the entire excavation and then screened approximately 5% of the material that was recovered. Um, in total, we uh, recovered 65 artifacts and five features. Um, the features included a rock and gravel path at building 1600, two artifact concentrations at 1622, and two pipes at building 1658, which is also uh, known as uh, Battery Marcus Miller. This was kind of interesting, uh, this, this latter feature, because it confirmed the location of drainage features that had been mapped using archival resources. And they were almost exactly, they almost they matched almost exactly. So here is uh, the recreated uh, map from the archival resources, and then this is what it looked like when we found it. So um, to wrap things up, the, the project encountered uh, a number of features. 30 of them were unexpected, and they were primarily related to um, the 1870s West Battery phase, Endicott era from the 1890s, and World War II. There were over 100 artifacts collected and cataloged, dating mostly to the early to mid-20th uh, century. There were six archaeological investigation and monitoring plans developed for this project, for these projects, I should say, um, and four emergency excavation plans. And in total, it really represented um, a, a successful way to preserve archaeological resources uh, within a really complicated landscape, um, within a National Historic Landmark, within an NRHP listed property, and still get the project to go forward. Uh, and the project 
was able to remain on schedule and on budget. So just like to thank a few folks, um, but otherwise, thank you very much.